Item C, adopt resolutions as successor agency to the San Bruno Redevelopment Agency, approving the draft first and second recognized obligation payment schedules for the periods of March 1st, June 30th, 2012, and July 1st, December 31st, 2012, and affirming the appointment of members of the Oversight Board for the former San Bruno Redevelopment Agency. Thank you, Honorable Mayor, members of the City Council. I'm going to provide you with a abbreviated presentation. Uh, the item before you tonight, the recognized obligation payment schedule, is a required payment schedule of the successor agency. As you know, redevelopment was eliminated as of February 1st, and the city voted to become act as the successor agency to the former redevelopment agency. You'll recall back in January, you, re you approved a similar schedule. It was called the Amended Enforceable Obligation Payment Schedule. That schedule remains in effect until this newest schedule that's before you tonight is approved, is certified by the county, and approved by the Oversight Board. So two schedules are being proposed tonight. The first is for the time frame of March 1st through June 30th, 2012, and the second uh, payment schedule being proposed is for July 1st through December 31st. The resolution also allows for the city manager to make any changes to the payment schedules that are needed in order to secure the uh, certification of the county auditor controller, which is the first step in the process, and then ultimately the approval by the oversight board. So that's the first item before you tonight. The second item is the discussion of the appointment of the two appointments by the city to the oversight board. Uh, just a reminder, the oversight board can, will consist of seven members. Two of those will be appointed by the city. Two are appointed by the county board of supervisors. We were recently informed that uh, deputy county manager Peggy Jensen will be one of those uh, appointments and a, the member at large, the public member appointment is heart board member Julie, I don't know how to pronounce her last name, by Gent. The other appointment will come from the County Superintendent of Education. That appointment has not yet been made that I'm aware of. Uh, another appointment will come from the Chancellor of the Community College District. That appointment has been made. It's Barbara Christensen. And the final appointment will come from the largest special uh, district taxing entity, which in our case is the Peninsula Healthcare District. And that their appointment has not yet been identified. So those are the seven members of the Oversight Board. The Oversight Board will be responsible for making some uh, very important decisions that will impact the city. The first of those items is the, the Oversight Board will ultimately approve the repayment schedule of the city advances to the redevelopment agency. So as you recall, there's $2.9 million that was, that's outstanding that the city advanced to the redevelopment agency. Since we did not have a repayment schedule in place prior to the dissolution of redevelopment, that now lies with the oversight board, that determination of that over, uh, repayment schedule. The ROPS that's being presented to you tonight uh, recommends a repayment schedule of $500,000 a year over the next six years. And that is a change from what we previously discussed. Uh, we initially thought maybe we should try to expedite the repayment of that over the next six months. However, after Further, getting further information and looking at the cash flow, the reality is that there's not going to be adequate tax increment available to fund such a repayment schedule. So going back through and analyzing what's reasonable and what would possibly gain the approval over the oversight board, uh, the staff is recommending that that be the payment schedule, the proposed payment schedule. However, that is obviously open to uh, further discussion and direction from city council. The next item of significance that will be determined by the Oversight Board is the transfer of assets formerly owned by the redevelopment or owned by the former redevelopment agency. The two major properties assets uh, are the San Bruno Police Station building and the uh, public parcel, the landscape parcel at 470 San Mateo Avenue. Now the statute says that all assets of the former redevelopment agency are to be sold and for the highest dollar amount possible with an exception that if those properties served a governmental purpose, the oversight board can determine to transfer those to the uh, government agency. 
So at this point in time, we're assuming that the oversight board will recommend the transfer of those properties to the city. However, that is a decision point that remain that needs to still be approved by the oversight board. And the remaining item is the semi-annual approval of the ROPS, uh, the payment schedules. Those will be presented and those will be approved uh, twice a year by the oversight board. Uh, the city, as a successor agency, will be responsible for uh, setting up these meetings of the oversight board. We'll be responsible for ensuring that all those meetings are noticed and that we comply with the Brown Act on those. Uh, so basically given the importance of the decisions that are going to be presented to the oversight board, um, it's important that the two city representatives be able to fully represent all the redevelopment act activities of the former redevelopment agency. And following the lead that many other agencies have sort of set on this, uh, we find that many agencies are appointing the mayor and the city manager to their oversight boards. So that is the recommendation that was provided in this report. Okay. Do we need two actions or the appointment of the two individuals first and then one action? Okay. I, I would like to suggest if there's no objection that myself and the city manager be on the oversight board. And is there any, uh, Mr. Lubke? I have a question. Honorable Mayor, members of the city council, <coughs> ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's my suggestion that at the uh, next confidential meeting that you have with the uh, Pacific Gas and Electric Company regarding what we consider to be their obligation to uh, enhance improvements and to uh, cause something to be uh, done to improve uh, life and conditions, in uh, the city of San Bruno that we consider the economic development uh, costs as a uh, something that would be uh, over and would be would go delete the library idea and uh, go for uh, money for development thank you through the chair, Thank you. real quick, and, and maybe to the city manager or community development director, just very quickly, as far as obviously the redevelopment was, was going to be instrumental in the transit corridor, uh, I'm, obviously I don't serve on that, but could very briefly maybe you just let us know what that really is going to do to that whole, that whole vision that was had in the meetings that have occurred. So the uh, transit corridors plan is in its final form. We are completing the EIR on that document. And uh, we have yet to initiate the vision that that plan puts forth. The intent um, expressed in the plan itself is that the redevelopment tool might be utilized to facilitate infrastructure improvements that would be necessary, water, sewer, streets, and other types of necessary physical improvements that will be necessary in order to facilitate and accommodate the new development that's envisioned in the plan. Uh, beyond that, um, incentives might be provided or support might be provided to uh, private business or private development interests in order to assist uh, their decision to locate in San Bruno and to uh, build out the vision of the transit corridors plan. And then using another example that um, has been effectively or was effectively utilized in the past in San Bruno is support to provide affordable housing to buy down the affordability of residential units in order that they can be made uh, available to low income persons. That is another um, strategic initiative of the plan itself. It's something that uh, we did very effectively at the Crossing San Bruno project using the tool of redevelopment. Um, so at this point, it's, it's difficult to say what the status of the plan vision and ultimate development will be. What can be said very clearly is that the tool of redevelopment will no longer be available and it is expected that with the burden of the um, development uh, solely on uh, the 
the private sector um, economy that it is highly likely um, and I would say probable that either that vision will take a very long time to realize or that it may not be realized at all without the opportunity of other resources to help um, facilitate, uh, provide public infrastructure and um, uh, otherwise assist the development of that vision. Any additional comments? No, that, I'd say economic development, infrastructure, and housing are going to probably be the three biggest challenges that we, that we have to tackle and be more creative now that, that redevelopment is gone. And, you know, so I think hopefully some new, new tools arrive, but they're not here yet, so that's something that we're going to have to look into further. Thank you. Okay, we're looking for a motion to approve the draft and also to approve the appointment. So moved. Is there a second? Second. I don't see no, it. it doesn't see no. a resolution. It just says approving draft. Oh, I'm the wrong spot. There's a resolution for successor agency. No. So we need to introduce, I'll, I'll introduce uh, the first resolution, which is the one uh, appointing uh, the mayor and the city manager to the board. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's the second resolution, correct? That's the second one. <clears throat> it's titled it Council Member one? Salazar. Aye. Council Member O'Connell. Aye. Council Member Medina. Aye. Vice Mayor Medina. Ibera. Aye. Mayor Ruane. Aye. Okay. And now I'll introduce the uh, first resolution. Council Member Salazar. Aye. Council Member O'Connell. Aye. Council Member Medina. Aye. Vice Mayor Ibera. Aye. Mayor Ruane. Aye. 